Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Alright, it's time to change these guys over to a different substrate. These are the babies that were born earlier this year, or late last year? When was it? October. October 5th, I think, they were born. Uh, these are surviving two of the three. The other one was just too small uh, uh, to make it. And uh, we need to get them off paper towels and get them on uh, some crushed walnut, some better substrate for them. Um, these will, uh, are, are now, both of them are now feeding on pinks. Uh, Originally, I started them on geckos, and uh, so now they're going to be butt hurt because I'm going to pick them up and move them from place to place so we can you know, put them on something clean, and uh, they're not going to like that, as usual. Um, we, we don't put uh, usually a water dish in because we spray it down because they're sort of scale sippers. So let's see if we can move this little guy. He looks a little dusky, doesn't he, huh? Come on, I know the hook is cold. Oops, we're going to be the loop noodle. Come on, I'm trying not to rough you up so you don't have too much of a, uh, a hemorrhage. Oh, you blended really well with that substrate. And there you go. These are Egyptian saw scales, captive born and bred here at the lair. They're uh, quite hematoxic. Uh, that snake would certainly put me in the hospital. They've grown quite a bit since they hatched. Uh, this is probably the fifth or sixth brood of uh, Echis pyramidum that I've had here at the lair. Um, the egg layers usually only have, you know, four to six or so eggs. That's all they, the females can fit in them. And uh, the live bearer, the only live bearer in the genus Echis is uh, Echis socherukii. And the record uh, for that particular species here at the lair was 39 babies, which is quite a lot of echis to take care of and find homes for, so we don't breed those guys anymore. So let's uh, move this guy uh, back into uh, the rack where he can get warm because that substrate is uh, it's not so warm out of the bag <clears throat> and we'll see if he'll feed in a day or so he just fed yesterday so that way he can be butt hurt for a few days and uh, I don't have to particularly worry about him not feeding we'll just set this aside for right now Clean that up after we're done. Here's the second baby. This one uh, has been eating a whole lot better than the other one. The other one was a real pain in the tuchus to, to get feeding. Hi. Yes, it looks like it's looking for some more food. It, yeah. Yeah, this one's a little bit better feeder started eating mice uh, uh, before its sibling and you can see there's a little bit more chunk here she is a bit I think it's a she looks a little bit more chunky than uh, the other one I know I know it, it's a hook what can I say come on there you go there you have your furniture and your furniture 
although the tail morphology does look to be about the same, but we'll give them some time and there's no reason for us to, to worry too much about what sex they are uh, uh, right now. It's just that we want to get them feeding and uh, keep them happy and uh, growing and then we'll figure out if we're going to find a home for them or or they're going to hang out here with uh, with us. Since echis are relatively easy keepers once they get feeding and they're not bouncing across the room uh, with the greatest of ease, um, makes them a little bit easier for us to keep. They're not very large snakes. Um, so they, uh, they're, they're easy to cage. Now, meanwhile, you know, from the Jurassic Park uh, movie, um, remember when Muldoon said, we're being watched? Well, we're being watched. <laughs> Fatso there that uh, got fed, uh, you probably have seen the video already, the Thud Special. The uh, tabletop version. Yes, the tabletop version. Uh, uh, he got fed three mice instead of two, so um, he's uh, he's still looking for something to eat, although he is rather uh, rotund and healthy uh, uh, in general. So, sorry dude, it's just not going to happen for you. <laughs> we have here today is a very lively South Florida pygmy rattlesnake. Uh, Lori commented, that's not such a pygmy. Well, it is a pygmy. Uh, it is uh, uh, quite toxic. Uh, certainly one of the more cytotoxic uh, uh, rattlesnakes that's out there. Um, their favorite prey when they're small is actually uh, centipedes, scolopendra, and they get quite big in Florida. Um, they're also uh, uh, prone to getting something called a pestomid. And I'll do a short video on a pestomid uh, after she's uh, uh, put into her new clean tub, but she's a pit viper. She has a very nice little cute little rattle on her tail that you can't even hear. That's her, uh, that's her shed that she just uh, came out of and so I figured this was a good occasion for everybody to have a good look at Miss Pig. Uh, it's the only rattlesnake I currently have in the collection, and actually I promised her to somebody else, so she might be going uh, uh, to be rehomed very soon. Uh, actually, I think it's not a she, Mr. Pig. Um, again, we don't normally bring things out on the table, but uh, we figured this is a small snake. Um, I have a pair of uh, uh, my tongs, which were uh, provided uh, by the folks at uh, Midwest Tongs, uh, the Viper Keeper uh, Signature uh, Miniature Tongs, that if she decides to play snake hockey, I'm just not going to mess around and I am going to uh, uh, get her with the tongs. Um, Come on. Pygmies come in a variety of different colors. They're actually quite common and one of the more common snakes that we, uh, we, we can find on a road cruise in Florida, out in the Everglades. Uh, they sit on the dirt roads and uh, warm up and sun themselves. Uh, caught many of them, actually. Now, catch is really not the word that I use. Basically, we just uh, go out for the sport of it, seeing what we can see, and we 
we sort of corral the critter, take some photographs, and let it go on its way. Um, I'm not big for taking snakes out of the wild, um, but uh, I'll show you what a pestomid looks like because pestomids never were in population of pygmy rattlesnakes in Florida and they recently discovered that they were. When I show you uh, this pestomid, uh, you might be put off from having a certain shape piece of uh, spaghetti um, that's common in the, you know pasta salads uh, um, and I can talk to you a little bit more about them uh, once she's away and uh, I don't have to pay so much attention to what he's doing. Come on. You gonna behave yourself? No, of course, course not. Come on, I don't want to use... We're gonna play snake hockey. No, we're not. Yeah. Go in there. No, you don't want to go in there, do you? Huh? And taste your freedom. Yep, and that's why we have a Uplex. So I'll take her back on him, <laughs> but I don't know why I call her her. Uh, I'll take him back across the f uh, to the other room. Uh, Lori can follow me, and you can see how nifty the Uplex is, and uh, uh, why it's a very good piece of hardware to have in your snake keeping collection because you have the snake contain and you can just line it up with the slot in the rack and just slide it in and there's no chance of playing snake hockey correctly done. So we're going to pause the camera. I'm going to go get my pestomid and we'll talk about it. It's not going to fall apart. I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll leave that clip in the video. Uh, Lori's bailed out on me because uh, I'm about to re remove this uh, pestomid from uh, its bottle of preservative. Um, the story behind this is I had a wild-caught East African gaboon viper and I found it dead shortly after arrival. Its mouth opened and uh, uh, out of the, just outside of its mouth uh, uh, on the uh, substrate was this guy. Let's see if I can get it out without breaking it. Although Lori's hoping I, I break it up so we can uh, toss it out because she doesn't like it. It's pretty yucky. I have to agree, it's pretty yucky. Um, like I said, it put me off spaghetti of this shape for quite some time. Okay, so that is a pestomid. That is a larger variety from Africa. Um, it crawled out of the lungs of a gaboon viper and the pygmy rattlesnakes are are now inf getting infested with these guys. Um, it's very interesting because mm, the taxonomists have trouble classifying this. It's sort of a cross between a worm and an insect and uh, it's actually a, uh, uh, a parasite that these snakes carry that you can actually uh, uh, get. Um, I, when, this, when I found this outside the Gaboon Viper's uh, uh, mouth when, when it was dead, um, I contact, took a picture and contacted my friend Don Boyer who's the curator of the Bronx Zoo Reptile House. Uh, but at the time, he was the curator at the San Diego Zoo, of the reptile collection there. Um, he told me what it was, because I had no idea. 
Um, and he warned me to be very careful because these can infect humans. Um, the only way to, they know of to, to get rid of them is actually do bronchoscopy and pull them out one by one. Uh, they burrow into your lung tissue and eat your lung tissue. So that's what ultimately killed the gaboon viper. But uh, these are now, in, smaller ones are now infesting uh, the pygmy rattlesnakes in South Florida. So that's what a pestomid is. And uh, uh, you can see why I was put off a certain shaped pasta for a while uh, because of its size. Lori was absolutely grossed out, uh, even the thought that I was going to pull this out and show it. Uh, um, but it is sort of an unusual thing that, you know, you have to be aware of if you're a, a snake keeper, especially if you get snakes from the wild. They can carry all sorts of zoonotic parasites that you could end up acquiring yourself. So. Uh, I'll end the video here. I'll put Mr. Pestomid back in his bottle. Uh, goes back into my collection of oddities that I have. Um, and uh, you guys can go, you know, uh, uh, vomit in the toilet probably.